all right what is going on guys so today i apologize i it's been a crazy day so i really don't have time to sort of do a more detailed breakdown like i normally would like i want to but today i want to talk about something more general and kind of just give just I want to just talk about something in general and kind of give my thoughts on a concept and sort of give advice based on some of the learnings I've had over the past sort of two years of really getting heavy into the development world and being mostly self-taught. So to give you some context, I am a primarily self-taught developer who I think for my age is pretty successful. I am 20 years old and I am a, currently a college student, but I've successfully shipped a full startup, which Insider Viz, if you haven't seen it before, we do um, insider trading aggregations and stuff. And the reason why this is so late is we just got done with the my school's um, best of student startups competition and we won. So we won that competition, really great. We're moving on to the next round for the full accelerator competing for that. Really exciting stuff, really happy, super proud of the guys I worked with, everything we did. It's been a crazy six months building that. But then the other thing I have is I'm currently a full back-end developer at a um, company called Raptor Labs. I do a bunch of back-end developer there. I, I do back-end development there. I got hired very recently, and I'm making, I don't want to just put the number out there because that's kind of trashy, but I'm making very close to six figures, and I'm only 20. So I sort of want to talk through how I did all this stuff and this isn't meant to be a oh I've done so well or whatever it's sort of I want to give you a breakdown of the sort of way I went from right two years ago I was just in tutorial hell I was just doing like basic to-do apps I was doing random nonsense I was learning random concepts but wasn't getting anywhere with it I was just doing the basics and then I kind of found school to be similar I'm in school right now and I found a lot of the stuff there's been a lot of very useful stuff I've gotten out of it the algorithms class the software class the systems class they're all phenomenal I've gotten a ton of very valuable information out of there but not all of them are sort of created equal, and I haven't gotten a huge amount out of a lot of classes, and where I've really gotten, the places where I've really grown and learned are, I've learned and grown where I'm actually building stuff, if that makes any sense. So I want to talk about how I actually do that, and to just say, oh, just go build stuff, you idiot, that doesn't mean anything. That's just like, okay, so cool, you can build stuff, but what do I build? Where do I build it? How do I know where to start? How do I do this and that? How do I go from this little to-do app to an actual app idea? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So what I want to talk about is, first of all, how I actually learn this stuff, and then two, how you actually go about taking this stuff to completion. So the first thing is learning. And I think that when you start the sort of development process, when you're kind of younger and you're newer, I was, you get caught up in tutorial hell land where you're just constantly watching new tutorials, learning new random concepts, doing this and that, but they're all, they're all very sparsely connected. They don't actually mean anything in relation to each other. You're just learning, okay, here's how an HTML form works. Here's how a JavaScript class works. Here's how this works. Here's how to make it to do app in React. Here's how to host a PHP server. You're just learning all these random concepts and they don't mean anything. And where the learning really comes in is in two parts. First is you need to learn to read documentation. I don't watch videos anymore. I, well, I do, but they're more for entertainment stuff. I watch people like, you know, Theo and Primogen and that kind of thing. And I love their stuff, but it's not as much educational as it is kind of just pseudo entertainment. And I think in a, to an extent, my stuff sort of fills that void too. But I think I try and I work really hard to make sure that whatever I'm doing and whatever I'm putting out, it has a kernel of value to it. You know, like, Sure, stuff like breaking down, you know, what's my app stack and debating which language is the best, that's enjoyable. Everyone likes doing that and talking about, you know, what's their favorite this or that and debating that kind of thing. It's, we all enjoy that, but I want to put in, you know, why. I want to give the why on this stuff. And I think that a lot of people, and the two I mentioned, they do that as well. I think it's great, and I think that's a really great um, sort of space to be in, and that's why I want to do this and just talk about, you know, why this stuff just sort of talk about it because a it's fun and b i think there's a lot of useful things that people just aren't taught and i want to help teach them that stuff but i'm getting way off the beaten path so the point is you need to learn documentation learning to just go in and instead of going and watching random tutorial videos and udemy courses and this and that all of these major technologies and frameworks and languages and everything you need to know these are well documented pieces of software um, the best example of this I can give is this week when I started my job, I had to learn Hasura because they wanted to use that for one of their back end, for the back end project I'm assigned to. They were considering using it, they weren't certain, but I wanted to give it a real shot. So I went in and I was like, okay, I need to learn Hasura. I need to figure out how to do this. I'd never used it before. On Monday, I had never touched Hasura other than seeing people on Twitter say it's bad because putting GraphQL in between 
your like database and then your front end is wrong. It's not where GraphQL belongs. And frankly, I agree with them. And, but I do think Asura has some merit. Um, that's going to be a completely separate video and a completely separate time. But it's people use it wrong. And if you just use it as just CRUD to your database and you don't actually add anything separate to it, yeah, that's where it gets really bad. But if you use it as a complement to a real separate server, I think it has a lot of value. But that's yet to be seen as we build out this project. But what I'm trying to say here is I had never used it before. But what I was able to do is I was able to go through I know how to read documentation. I'm comfortable with it. I did all the breakdowns that they did in the docs. I read through it. I went into all their example Git repos. I looked through the code myself. I would look at each individual piece. And when you first look at it, you're overwhelmed. I didn't know how any of it worked. I didn't know how the connectors work. I didn't know how you would instantiate it. I didn't know how the client would work on the website. So you just have to go step by step, piece by piece. The key is to not get overwhelmed. The key is to look at a giant piece of code. You have no idea what the hell is going on. You want to look at each piece. I always start with just like, what's something I do know? I look at, okay, I do know this. I know that they are making an API request to something. So what API are they making that request to and why? So I look at that. I break that down. I'm like, okay, so they're making a request to, you know, some authentication API or whatever. This isn't really an example for Hasora, just what I came up with off the top. But so they're making a request to this. So, okay, cool. So then why are they making that request? And that why is the key. That why is how I am been able to teach myself so effectively and so quickly. I don't just blindly follow these tutorials. I don't just blindly read the docs and copy paste. I ask why. Why are they importing this? Why are they using this instead of that? I've heard of using TRPC instead of REST to fetch my data. I wonder why I should be using TRPC instead of REST. I research it. I research why should I be using it. I read the TRPC documentation. I learn about the use case. And then I compare it with, and then I actually go and implement it. I take those concepts from the docs and then I try and put them into a project. And I put it side by side and I get hands-on experience with it. And this is a very rapid way of learning things. That's what I did with this Asura this week. I had to figure out how to authenticate it. So. I did a ton of research, I read all their documentation, I did all that, and I thought, okay, Auth0 seems like a really great way to implement this. So Auth0 and Hisora seem to have good integration with each other, so how am I going to do this? Now, on Hisora's docs, they had a breakdown of how to integrate the two together, but it didn't perfectly match my use case because I did want to have a separate TRP, or not TRP, I wanted to have a separate backend server that I still also use, and I didn't want the only CRUD to be from Hisora and that kind of thing. But the point is, I needed to figure out how to incorporate Next um, Auth0 and Hasura all together. So you break down this documentation, you go piece by piece, I implement each individual piece, and at the end of it, I kind of get to a point where I'm like, okay, this makes sense, and I do ex the example project, and I keep trying it, but then there are certain things where I'm just confused, and I'm like, okay, why are they doing it this way? When I go and try and do it, that's not really there in the docs anymore, there's something new. So a good example of this is in the like rules of Auth0, you need to set the user's like permission levels for their um, for their JWT because you have, when you're generating the JWTs in Auth0, you have to send those up to Hasora. You need to make sure that you put the right permissions on the JWT. So I had to figure out, okay, how do I do that on Auth0's end? So I had to go in and I was like, okay, so let's break down. So they want me to do it in this rules section, but this rules section on the Auth0 page says it's deprecated. So I went and looked at, okay, so what's the new one? And then I see the new one and I'm like, okay, so how's this actually working? I break it down in my head. I'm like, okay, so now I understand that this is a flow. So it triggers on a login request. So they log in, then it triggers this, and then it triggers, then it just generates the token. So this is effectively a middleware on the authentication process. Great, I know what that means. Now I can go into that process and I can fill in the details of what I need there. So I go in and I'm like, okay, so I know how this works. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and actually implement that. I did it, I tested a bunch of stuff, and after a few hours of debugging, I had it up and running. And within three days of I had never worked with Asura before. I have full CRUD implementation and authentication ready on an app, and we're moving full speed ahead on the development process. And that is a turnaround time not a lot of people can get because not a lot of people ask the right questions. They get overwhelmed and they go down the wrong rabbit holes. I'm not saying that like the way other people learn is wrong and the way I learn isn't necessarily right for you, but I'm just telling you that the way I do things is it's all about getting your hands dirty with something and actually building stuff. And that is right. The best way to learn is to build stuff but you need to build stuff while asking questions. You need to ask why is each and, and, and why is each and everything, why is everything being done? And when you learn why everything is being done, that's when you can start 
making headway. That's when you start learning these concepts. That's when suddenly you understand how a REST API works. That's how suddenly you understand, okay, this is how Next is actually architected. Why am I doing this in get server side props instead of get static props? What's the difference? Oh, and now I know why. I know that one will build static and I know that one will be fetched on the server on every request. Now I get it. You have to ask why. So it's a very rambly way of saying the way I learn things and the way that I recommend you learn things and the sort of best path forward to advance in my experience as quick as humanly possible is to ask why. You need to actually build stuff and then you need to, while you're building it, you need to ask why am I doing this? Why is this tutorial telling me to put this in this place or whatever? So again, this isn't the end all be all, but this is sort of how I've done it. And I think this could definitely be helpful for some people. So I want to put it out there again. I apologize for this sort of, um, lazier format, quote unquote, it's, I would rather have a demo built out, but I really just don't have time today. I still have to get to the gym and then I still have to get home and get to bed at a decent hour. because I have to stand up early in the morning. I got a lot of work I need to get done. So let me know what you think of this. If you like the just sort of talking about general concepts, there are a million things where I can just talk forever um, pretty easily. So if there's stuff like that that you want to hear about, please let me know. And then um, hopefully next week we'll be back to regularly scheduled massive breakdowns. Um, got the framework comparison in the pipeline. Um, the work I've been doing at Real Work, that's a gold mine of content. I'm learning so much in there so fast, really enjoying it, um, love being there. And then probably a lot of startup type stuff with um, Insider Viz is sort of accelerating forward. We won this first competition, great stuff there. And now we are pressing forward towards growing it, getting more ambitious with it. We're focusing on building out more institutional type features, targeting a more um, sophisticated audience, targeting hedge funds, that kind of thing, really trying to scale the product. So yeah, that's about it. Um, if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the rambling. If you got something valuable, uh, let me know. And yeah, have a great day.